But one place where she caused the most damage was in Bill Lewis's place, where a fine large mirror was ruined besides considerable liquor destroyed and bottles broken. It seems that her mission was to destroy as much of the bar that she could get her hands on. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Whiskey and History Podcast. This is your host, Zach Homeyer. Welcome guys to episode number 8. Sorry, it's been a little bit, life's been uh, busy with me trying to plan my wedding coming up here in October, but finally had time to sit down and tell you a little story that I have been researching out of the blue that I found really interesting. Um, Just real quick, a breakdown, uh, since today's episode is about a person that strongly believed in the temperance uh, movement and that I also gave up drinking any alcohol for Lent, I'm not going to have a cocktail during this episode. So for those of you who do not know what temperance, um, the temperance, the temperance movement was, sorry, I can't speak. It was a movement designed to help people resist the temptation to drink alcohol. And later, um, their main goal was to try to convince local and state and national governments, uh, to, uh, prohibit drinking alcohol completely. Thanks for listening, and um, if you want to have a cocktail, go right ahead. I'm not stopping you. But unfortunately, uh, the next episode, I will be able to bring back my favorite type of drinks, uh, whiskey, of course. So, uh, for today's episode, it's about a woman uh, named Carrie Nation that I've never heard about until recently when I was laying in bed uh, one night watching the History Channel, uh, the show the booze, bets, and sex that built America. And during the show, they were talking about um, Anheuser-Busch and how they got started in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And then uh, in the early 20th century, they started to run into issues. And the temperance movement was uh, gaining popularity with a woman named Carrie Nation. And I thought to myself after watching this episode... Um, from the History Channel, um, I was thinking to myself, well, Kansas City, Missouri is not that far from Springfield, uh, Springfield, Illinois. So I said, you know, maybe this woman ha- may have visited Springfield at some point. And when I get that itch to do some uh, quick research, I get on the State Journal, Re- uh, State Journal Register Archives, which is our local paper here in town, and I decided to look up uh, Mrs. Uh, Nation. And what do you know? I found a small treasure trove of articles talking about what Mrs. Nation, what Mrs. Nation was going to do next. And I ended up finding out that she did, in fact, visit little old Springfield. And before we talk about her visit to Springfield, let me tell you a quick uh, backstory of Mrs. Nation herself. Starting in 1900, Mrs. Nation decided to go to a few local bars in Kiowa, Kansas, where she went into the saloons armed with brickbats and was ably reinforced after she gained entrance by billiard balls, cues, etc., etc. That was the quote. She was basically using anything that she could get her hands on to cause as much destruction as possible to these bars slash saloons. The one place where she caused the most damage was in Bill Lewis's place, where a fine large mirror was ruined besides considerable liquor destroyed and bottles broken. It seems that her mission was to destroy as much of the bar that she could get her hands on. The crazy part was that Mrs. Nation was not even arrested after causing all this destruction to these bars. She decided to ask the city authorities to place her under arrest, but after some consideration, the authorities took no action against her and just let her return home, which is very shocking, actually. Um, The big question on everyone's mind was, why would she do such a thing? And Mrs. Nation's response was that she seemed... 
It was up to Carrie Nation to perform God's work of cleansing the earth of these different evils that people partake in, such as drinking alcohol and smoking tobacco. And after this first incident, Carrie Nation continued her rampage of trying to destroy as many bars throughout Kansas, Missouri, and even New York. She would become very famous during this time since she would bring with her a big hatchet to slash apart these different bars. This would get her several nicknames over the years, such as the Saloon Wrecker, the Kansas City Cyclone, Hatchet Granny, and these are just a few of many more. Um, the reason why they called her Hatchet Granny, for example, was she was an older lady um, in her mid-50s, um, almost uh, kind of mid-50s, early 60s, and people, she wasn't the prettiest looking lady, um, if you guys go check out the Instagram, I'll post several pictures of her. You can even look her up yourself. Uh, she's kind of scary looking, so I understand why she got the nickname Hatchet Granny. But anyway, in the summer of 1902, um, Springfield was hosting a vaudeville show at the Coliseum, located on the state fairgrounds. The company putting on the show uh, wanted to invite the Kansas City Whirlwind, a.k.a. Um, Carrie Nation to Springfield to close out the show. It took some persuading, but she did finally agree, and Mrs. Nation did attract a massive crowd of residents from, from the Springfield region, wanting to get a glimpse of the lady that they read about almost on a weekly basis in the newspaper. It seemed uh, that the men of Springfield thought of her as a joke and showed no respect towards her since she was invited to be in a vaudeville show, which is really an insult um, if you guys don't really know what a vaudeville show is, it's a show that more like comedy. Um, it's like what the Three Stooges kind of got into before they were on television. It's like these comedic acts or um, just these different type of characters from the turn of the century that would uh, put on these uh, shows for people. And so they basically viewed her as that type of person, not someone that's trying to fight for temperance or abolition or anything along those lines. So, um, anyway, when it was her time to speak at the Coliseum later, uh, she reflected on what happened that day and she arrived early before the show to go visit the saloon district in Springfield. When she walked into the saloon, she gave everyone a piece of her mind saying, what do you think I saw in the resort of impurity? That haven of the hopeless drunkard, that thief of the poor woman's living. Why, men were playing cards, men were drinking, and other men were smoking. Just think of it. Men smoking and drinking and playing cards on Sunday. Mrs. Nation was disgusted with the men of Springfield, since they were committing so many sins on the Lord's Day. Since she was going to let everyone know how she really felt about the land of Lincoln, one of the reporters that interviewed Mrs. Mrs. Nation asked her, do you realize you have been booked in Springfield as a vaudeville attraction? Which do you consider the more hurtful Sunday, vaudeville or smoking on Sunday? It seems that the men of Springfield only viewed Mrs. Nation as a comedic skit or a freak show character that they would pay money to see and not as someone trying to fight against the evils of alcohol to help battered women. At the show, there were many women and abolitionists attending the show um, in support of Mrs. Nation. It is hard to believe, but she had a massive impact on women for, for the time because she did not put up with their bullshit. Seriously, she would tell everyone how it is and fight for something that she truly believed in. Instead of just destroying bars and saloons, she was being paid to give speeches during this event. She told everyone that she was saving money for a home to build for wives of drunkards to help. Um, then she located a perfect place, apparently, in Kansas City, and it would cost around $20,000 to build this home. Um, Mrs. Nation's impact was so massive that other women throughout the Springfield community began to mimic her actions. I found several cases in my research. For example, a woman in New Berlin, a small town outside of Springfield, decided to throw a beer bottle through a plate glass window in front of the saloon building. This was not this lady's first engagement at this place before either. 
Another woman in the town of Pena used a brick bat to demolish a mirror and fixtures because her son drank too much red liquor and ended up falling from a hayloft and injuring himself. These articles all have the same headline saying, emulates uh, carry nation. The women in the town of Edinburgh made a carry nation fan club that had at least 15 women members that joined from the local church. The news article stated that the fan club knew about men selling alcohol illegally and had them arrested. The women would march around the streets of Edinburgh with their hatchets ready to do some smashing. And Mrs. Nation was a local celebrity, especially to women that were getting sick and tired of the abuse that they received when their husbands or men would drink alcohol. And basically I was just totally shocked to find all these different articles talking about Mrs. Nation throughout Illinois because I never heard anything about her before. And what really interested me, what really interested me uh, to find was, was there ever, was there ever any instance in Illinois where she did some type of smashing or destruction in a bar? Like I was dying to find this. And then finally, after a few hours of research, I stumbled across a couple interesting stories that I was so desperately looking for. And I was actually kind of surprised to find um, Mrs. Nation attended the uh, Carnival of the Elks in Danville, Illinois. She finally did what she was so famously known for, which was, of course, smashing with her hatchet the exhibit of the Danville Brewing Company in the midst of a throng of a thousand people. Mrs. Nation put on a show for at least a thousand bystanders that have been so serious or been so curious over the years that what they read in the papers was true. The police did, in fact, arrest her um, in this case for the destruction that she caused. Uh, towards the Danville Brewing Company, but the Elks made good of the loss and paid her fine. She was released without any further problems. And again, I'm kind of shocked on that because here you are, have someone that destroys alcohol in a public place with all these bystanders. Again, maybe it was these people viewing this as a comedic act or something to see. I don't know. It's kind of hard telling, but here's another instance um, in Girard, Illinois, located about 40 miles south of Springfield. Um, Mrs. Nation was set to speak at the Girard Corn Carnival. The Springfield paper wrote before the event, she will deliver two addresses on the state, which was October 20th, 1905. And it is expected um, an enormous crowd will be here to listen to this woman who has gained as much nor notoriety with her hatchet stunts as did George Washington when he had uh, chopped down the cherry tree, which I found that really funny. And um, it seems to me that Mrs. Nation has turned into a folk hero like Davy Crockett or Paul Bunyan. And on the day of the carnival, Mrs. Nation was able to attract a massive crowd when she delivered several speeches on prohibition and abolition. The paper said she did not have on her um, any war paint for this occasion, but was in actually a peaceful mood. It seems that she was there to spread her good word and not cause any damage to the small town of Gerard. She even sold hatches as she even sold hatchets as souvenirs for the people as promotional items, which I found that really, really uh, fascinating. Could you imagine going to your uh, corn carnival as a child and seeing this kind of creepy older lady, <laughs> sounds bad, selling hatchets? I mean, I think that's really fascinating. I would definitely would want to buy one. But um, Mrs. Nation ended up actually staying another day um, and decided to visit several saloons on the Levy district of Gerard, which I'm actually shocked there was one, because it's a very small town even today. When she entered the uh, Colin uh, Bros sal uh, saloon, she emphasized some of her remarks by snatching a glass from one of the patrons, who was in the act of taking a drink and threw it woman fashion, this is what the paper wrote, and smashed a valuable portrait on the wall. She had to make sure to give the people of Gerard one last incident for them to remember her by. 
she was not arrested and left town right after this happened. And the, like I said, these were the two stories I was able to find where Mrs. Nation would do some of her famous smashing in the state of Illinois. Um, I don't know if there's any more incidents. Um, I know that um, besides these incidents, uh, she gave many speeches um, throughout Illinois. And I found out that she would go throughout so many small towns, such as Petersburg, Rockford, Taylorville, back to Danville. I mean, she even went to Chicago. And one other fascinating little thing about her is um, she was into horse racing. And people would bet on her to see if she could win a quick dash across the field on horseback. And when I first read this, I'm like, this, this cannot be true. Is this like a joke? Because I could not imagine this lady in her, like I said, late 50s, early 60s, racing a horse at these carnivals or fairs or whatever. But um, again, this, <laughs> this made me chuckle because it's like, I cannot imagine that. And, I, and actually, almost every town she visited, she did this. Um, and actually, she was really good at it. She was undefeated from what I could find. So you did not want to be drinking in front of Mrs. Nation in, a, in your local saloon, or you didn't want to go up against her in a horse race, because she would uh, show you how to ride a horse. <laughs> and... Uh, Mrs. Nation would continue uh, her rampage across the country, smashing up saloons and restaurants to gain more followers in the course uh, towards uh, Prohibition. Um, and uh, she would end up dying in 1911 um, before the federal government would completely prohibit any consumption of alcohol in 1920. Um, really, overall, I thought it was a great story for you guys to listen to on the podcast. Uh, I've been looking for some more off the wall topics for the show. And I really, really enjoyed uh, seeing this on the History Channel. Like I said, it was a short little story. Um, that was the whole part of that uh, show. It was probably like, I don't know, five minutes where they just talked about her in Kansas City uh, smashing up a bar. And so it just fascinated to see if this woman ever came across um, Illinois. And, uh, and I've also really been looking for more stories on women since this was a time where women were not just talked about or written about as much in history. So like, and this is the reason why I love the story because she gained so much fame overnight where the newspaper would write about her almost weekly until her death, which was about 11 years after she started all this in 1900. Um, as soon as it happened, it made the headlines in Springfield. Um, she also did fight for change and believed that women should have a voice during a time when they didn't. And uh, she is definitely a woman ahead of her time, and it seems like she's not talked about or gets the notoriety that she really does deserve, and actually, in my opinion. Um, and, my, and she also, I think her name should live on, such as a Davy Crockett story that he was able to kill a bear with a knife, like she was able to smash up a saloon with her hatchet. And um, at least with this episode, I get to shine some light on her, in my opinion, forgotten legacy, and it can live on. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. It's a short and sweet little fun topic to talk about. I'm really looking forward to more uh, episodes here. Sorry, I've been slow on it, but I have so many topics. I thought this would be a fun little story to tell. Um, again, let me know if you guys like it. Um, uh, if you guys, I really appreciate that you would uh, check out the links below, follow uh, me on all social media platforms, and please uh, rate the show. I would really uh, greatly appreciate that. Thank you guys, and have a great night. Mm -hmm.